Welcome to the Ring of Faith, where we coach you through God's Word on how to become a knockout artist in life. Today, our show is called Bout. A bout is when two fighters are going at it. That's right, but today we're going to be talking about an acronym for Bout, B-O-U-T, and it stands for Become One Unified Team. Stick around to find out more about Bout. All things are possible. Welcome back to the Ring of Faith today. Our show is called Bout, Becoming One Unified Team. It is so important to be a team, Anthony, mm -hmm. isn't it? Oh, yeah, definitely. In, in boxing, with your coach, your trainers, uh, your sparring partners, right. um, in a marriage with, your, with a husband and wife, um, at work with the people that work with you, uh, at church, you, know, you got your pastor and you got the team. In our ministry, we got a team that's with us. It's so important to be a team, and that's when you're united together. That's when you can truly make a difference. That's right. The Bible says a house divided against itself will not stand. Right. A team divided against itself will not stand either. That's right, and it's so important. We know that there is strength in numbers, and it's, it's as important as it's ever been right now in our country to be a unified team when it comes to Christians. We're going to give you a key scripture for today, and it's 1 Corinthians 1.10. And it says, Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions mm -hmm. among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Mm -hmm. And of course, he didn't say to be perfect. He said to be perfectly joined together. In other words, he's talking about the importance of unity, mm -hmm. to not be going all different directions as Christians. We need to be one whole body because that's what we are. Mm -hmm. We are the church. We are one body and we can make a difference in this world. Christians are some of the most loving, giving, difference making people in, on this whole planet. And we can do more of that if we stay unified. That's good. You know, Galatians 5, 22 and 23 says that we have the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, self-control. As a born-again child of God on the inside of you, you got God, 1 John 4, 8, who is love living on the inside of you. And it's not saying you're not going to disagree about things, but you learn to disagree agreeably, that you, that you work things out. It's not about always having to be right, but making things right mm -hmm. and agree to disagree because we're not all going to agree on everything. We're not all going to agree on doctoring and teaching and all these different things, but agree to disagree and do it in love. And we come together in unity. We all can agree as believers that Jesus is Lord. Because mm -hmm. you ain't getting to heaven if you don't agree on that one. Right. And so we find, we find common ground with other believers. Mm -hmm. And let's walk this out together. And right. the Bible says, Mark 16, make disciples. So we go out and we lead others to Jesus. Make them disciples. Get them into the Word of God to know Jesus for themselves. Paul says in Philippians 3.10 that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. That's what making a disciple, that you know Jesus. John 8.31 and 32, you'll continue in that word, then you're my disciple. You know the truth, the truth will make you free. When you all get in there and you start knowing that truth, we all become one united team making a difference for the Lord. That's so good, Anthony. And another uh, scripture that's along these lines is in Jude 16 through 18. And and basically, this is just talking about a group of people that we don't want to be in the body of Christ. We don't want to be divided by people like this. And it says they're grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts, and they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. A lot of times people do that. They use their words to agree with somebody or flatter them, even when they're wrong biblically, to gain advantage. And then it goes on to say, But you, beloved, remember the words that were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. That last verse said there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their ungodly 
less. And of course, you know, we have a lot of mockers in our society these days, people that, you know, make fun of Christians or criticize Christians for standing and believing God's word. That's what we're doing. We're holding God's principles above all else. That's good. You know, Jude 19, this is in the message translation. It says, there are ones that split churches thinking only of themselves. There's nothing to them. No sign of the spirit. Yeah. That's what these mockers, the ungodly people want to do. They want to divide Christians. They want to divide churches. I mean, if you're going to a church and you're having an issues with a with the pastor or with the, the the staff or whatever, go somewhere else. If you can't agree to disagree and maybe have a talk with them or whatever, but don't go in there trying to pull people from that church. God has called that pastor to be there. He didn't call you to be that pastor. He didn't call you to divide the church. He, you know, well, I'm here to correct the path. No, you're not. You're, you're a divisive. You're sent by the devil if you're in there trying to do that. That's not of God. God can speak to the pastor, and if he don't listen, then, then God, God can take care of it. But don't try to divide. Don't go in there disrupting, tearing up other people, trying to uh, undermine his authority and stuff. That's, that's just not of God. That is of the devil. That's so good, Anthony. In fact, there's a reference here that Peter uh, was talking about in Second Peter chapter 2, mm -hmm. and it kind of goes along those same lines, Anthony. It says, But there were also lying prophets among the people then, just as there will be lying religious teachers among you. They'll smuggle in destructive divisions, pitting you against each other, mm -hmm. biting the hand of the one who gave them a chance to have their lives back. They put themselves on a fast downhill slide to destruction, but not before they recruit a crowd of mixed up followers who can't tell right from wrong. Mm -hmm. And notice it was the religious people, mm -hmm. like you said, some pe there are people in the church mm -hmm. trying to bring this division. Exactly. It was the religious people that were coming in trying to get this person against this person and split the church or split mm -hmm. uh, groups or even Christians as a whole trying to get Christians, hey, come to my side. You know, I, mm -hmm. I know I've compromised a little on the Word of God, but if I can get enough people, mm -hmm. Christians with me on this, I won't feel so bad because mm -hmm. everybody, misery loves company and, mm -hmm. and sin loves company too. But everyone wants to belong but the devil wants to divide mm -hmm. and that's key to understand the devil wants this division and so you're playing right into his hand when you go in and try to divide we need to be inclusive not exclusive when it comes to the kingdom of God right you know Jesus is the only way and I'm not saying there's a lot of ways to God you know there's these different religions saying you can get to God like this or everybody right. gets no there's no Jesus says I am the way right. he's the only way to God Jesus, John 14, 6, Acts 4, 12, salvation is from no other name under heaven in which man can be saved. There's not many ways to God. There's the one way. But he made a way for everyone. He's not exclusive. He's inclusive. He's inviting everybody to come in. Right. John 3, 16, God so loved the world, he gave Jesus. And Jesus died on that cross for you, for everybody, for the whole world. Mm -hmm. First John 2, 2, he was the propitiation, the payment for our sins, not for ours only, but for the whole world. Right. He's not exclusive. He's inclusive. He's bringing everybody in to the kingdom. That's what you and I need to do. We need to be inclusive. We don't need to exclude because of different doctrines, color, ethnicity, how people look, their financial status. You know, this is what the devil wants us to do. Like think that you're superior and walk like you're better than somebody because you got more money or, you know, because you, you look better or you, or you know more of the Bible or, you know, your different color skin or whatever it is. It's, God's not about that. The Bible says man looks at the outward appearance, 1 Samuel 16, 7, but God looks at the heart. God looks what's going on in the inside. That's how God sees it. He don't care how much money you got. He don't care what color of skin you are. Mm -hmm. He don't care... You know, how much is the Bible, you know? He knows it all. It's all about Him. So we should not exclude based on any of those things. That's right, Anthony. And we'll leave him with this for this round, Anthony. It's just that Christians ought to be unified and building up other Christians, even when we disagree. If we cannot agree to disagree agreeably, the world will never take us seriously. Well, that's the end of round one. Stick around. We're going to be right back with more Ring of Faith. Ring of Faith wants to encourage you to not lose hope. It's in the darkest times that the light shines the brightest. To find out how Ring of Faith is helping your community, go to ringoffaithtv.com. Ring of Faith, helping others become a knockout artist in life.
Welcome back to The Ring of Faith. Today our show is called Bout, and we're talking about becoming one unified team. We've learned how the devil wants to divide the body of Christ. Right, but God wants us to unite. And we need to be unified in different areas of our life, and in a lot of areas of our life. And the first one, Anthony mentioned earlier, but our marriage, we need to be a unified team in. Ecclesiastes 4.12 says, Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand them, and a threefold cord is not easily broken. And of course, you know, if you tr ever tried to tie a knot with just two cords, it's not very strong. But when you fold in that third cord, it is very strong. And that's talking about adding God in and being a unified team in your marriage with your husband, your wife, and God. You both have a relationship with God individually, but also as a couple, it's so important if you want to be strong in your marriage is to be a unified team. Uh, and I love this scripture. I prayed a lot over Leanne and I, Ecclesiastes 9, 9, and we live joyfully together all the days of our life, which the Lord has given us under the sun. And that's so important. Like you meditate on these scriptures in Psalm 103, 20, when you speak the word, it says angels hearken to the voice. So the angels start working on your behalf in your marriage when you start meditating and speaking and believing these scriptures. Uh, Matthew 9, 29 says, according to your faith be it done to you. When you start believing that you're going to live joyfully together all the days of your life, when you start believing that God put you together for a purpose and a reason, that you need to be unified, and you start speaking and believing that and saying, saying well, my old, my old lady or the old ball and chain at home, you know, got to go home. And There's an old song from years ago that's talking about like, uh, I got all that a man wants waiting for me at home. Cause she likes to dance, she likes to romance, and she throws a great party. You know, and, and so, and it's like I don't need what the world has to offer. I got all that waiting for me at home. And when I enjoy the wife whom I love all the days of my life, which the Lord has given me, then we're unified in one united team. That's so good, Anthony. You're gonna have my that song in my head all night. <laughs> <laughs> that's that song. Old Paul Overstreet song. Oh, that's that was a good one. He's a strong believer he is. In, uh, in Nashville. Uh, all right, so we were talking about being a unified team in our marriage, but the second area we can be a unified team in is our children. Mm -hmm. And 1 Timothy 3, 4 says, One who rules his own house well, having his children in submission with all reverence. Mm -hmm. You know, basically, if there's peace in your home, then there's going to be unity. There's going to be a unified team. And, you know, when there is strife. The Bible talks about, you know, where there's strife, there's every evil work. Mm -hmm. And if you constantly have strife with your children or your spouse, mm -hmm. um, there's going to be every evil work. There's going to be all kinds of negative things that keep coming at your family. And you're mm -hmm. going to be like, what's going on? Why, why do I keep getting all these tax attacks? And then you look at your family life and realize that there's all this strife. There's all this, you know, bickering and, and bitterness and unforgiveness and all these things that we need to not have in our household. Now, we do need to have our children in submission with all reverence, right? And so we need to instruct them, train them up in the way they should go, teach them the things of God, but then they need to learn to be submissive so that there can be peace and unity in your house. That's good. And you need to have a strong relationship with God right. before this can flow through your household. You know, my, I love my kids so much, and they're great kids, and I'm so thankful for them. But I have them in the Scriptures a lot, meditating on the Scriptures, speaking the Scriptures, because that's what's going to transform them from the inside out. Romans 12, 2 says, Don't be conformed to the world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And as a parent, that's what we need to have our kids doing in the Scriptures, renewing their minds to who God says they are, who He says they are, what He says they have, and what He says they can do. Because that's where the, that true instruction comes from, is from our Heavenly Father. And that's what a good parent does, is lead them into the Scriptures, to have that relationship with Jesus for themselves. That's good. When they know Him, and they know He's got a plan for them, because it's not up to us. God's got a great plan for our children's life, not a great life for our plan for our children. And so we got to get into agreement with what He says, mm -hmm. and that's to know Him, to make Him known, get into those scriptures and when God is first place he's the center of our life that's where peace is it's not the football games it's not the basketball or the music careers or whatever no it's knowing Jesus and allowing him to reveal to them what he has created them for that's so good Anthony all right so we definitely need to be 
unified at home, whether it's in your marriage or relationship with your children and extended family, if you're close to them. Well, we also need to be a unified team in the church. Mm -hmm. And when I say in the church, I mean, the church ultimately is the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so we do need to be a unified team. But also if you attend church, we need to be a unified team and not be causing division. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians 3, 3 and 4 says, for you're still carnal. For where there are envy, strife and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For when one says, I am of Paul, and another, well, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just such a silly thing that they were <laughs> bickering over. How about, I'm of God. <laughs> I'm God's. Mm -hmm. Don't be concerned about, you know, which prophet or apostle, whatever you're following. You know, that was a silly thing. He was saying, mm -hmm. you're just acting like mere men. You know, you need to keep your eye on the prize, and that's keeping God the center. That's good. That's like saying, you know, I'm a Baptist, or I'm a... Presbyterian or I'm, you know, a Church of Christ or I'm a non-denominationalist or whatever. When I grew up, I, I would go on and off to a Baptist church with my mom. And so, I mean, I'd be out arguing with people that I'm a Baptist and that's the only way. And they're the, I mean, it's like, man, we're all getting more revelation as we grow. You know, we're of Jesus. You know, if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're of Jesus. It's not what church you attend. No, I'm a Christian. I attend this church or this whatever. But no, I'm a Christian. I'm a believer in Jesus. Because there's no different denominations in heaven. Right. No. We're believers in the Lord Jesus. And when we come into agreement with that, that's when we're in unity. And that's when we got power, man. That's when it flows through us. There's no division. There's no strife. We can walk in love with anybody. Lead them. To, and if they don't know Jesus, lead them to Jesus. And like I said, we attend a great church, and I'm so thankful for it. We've been there for 16 and a half years, and the teaching there has truly changed our life. Right. But we're of Jesus. We're of God. Now, I'm not that, you know, I'm not their disciple. I'm Jesus's. Mm -hmm. and I just thank God for him. I honor my pastor. I'm so thankful for him. But I'm right. a Christian, and I'm a believer, and I encourage you to be like that too. And when we walk in love, and I can attend, you can attend whatever, you know, whatever church you want, that God leads you to. Right. Right. You seek God. Allow God to show you. Because you might not be where somebody else is in your walk with God. You might need this structure. You might need right. that structure. You go there. And no condemnation to anybody. And don't be superior in your walk with God to whoever. Or look down on somebody because they don't go to your church. You go where God leads you and allow them to go where God leads them. And we can all walk in love and you be in unity. You know, and, and something right now in our country that we can really be unified about is assembling as a body That's of Christ. Right. Because right now, that freedom is under attack. And the Bible says in Hebrews 10, 25, let us not neglect or forsake in the King James. Not us, let us not neglect meeting together as some has made it a habit. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're in the habit of not going to church. And if you have a legitimate reason, that's fine. We're, we're compassionate. We're understanding. But if you don't and, and you're you just... You can watch us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But if you're just hanging at home because it's more convenient, that's not really a biblical reason to not attend church. But I want to encourage you, let's stay unified by agreeing on this, that we should be assembling together. Let's not have... You know, some Christians over here saying, well, no, we shouldn't meet. And these saying we, sh we should meet. That's mm -hmm. biblical. Mm -hmm. And it's a freedom and it's a fundamental Christian right. We have that freedom of religion that we can peaceably assemble. It's in our Constitution. We need to stand for it. We need to believe it. Amen. You know, and the Bible says in Acts 14, 27, it says, When they all came together and gathered at the church, they reported all that God had done with them and that he opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. So they all come together sharing what God had done for them. And when you share what God has done for you, right. it builds hope in somebody else. And so it's like, well, if he did it for them, Acts 10, 34, he's no respecter of person. He can do it for me. And then you can show them the scriptures that you stood on and believed for, and then God can work it through them. And that's why you can share and you can build and you can help and you can pray for each other. The Bible says in James 5, 16, you know, when you're sick, Take it to the elders of the church. Let them lay hands on you. And the prayer of faith will save or heal the sick. And this is what we are. We're in the army of the Lord. Don't try to divide. Walk in love. Agree to disagree. 
I love that what they were doing in Acts, just all sharing what God had done. Yeah, man. And some churches actually do that in their service. Now, if, if that's not part of your church's routine, don't just stand up and start, you know, testifying yeah, exactly. or whatever. But if it is, that's great because there are some churches we've been to where that's the case. But I was thinking about an old song, Anthony, it says, Stand up, tell us all about it. Stand up, identify. Stand, stand up. up, tell us all about it. Stand up. Testify. <laughs> Tell about what God has done for you. Well, that's in around two. Stick around. We're going to be right back with more Ring of Faith. If you would like to have Anthony or Leanne Cooper speak at your next event, contact us at info at ringoffaithtv.com or you can write to us at P.O. Box 1110, Mount Juliet, Tennessee, 37121. Welcome back to the Ring of Faith. Today we're talking about BOUT, becoming one unified team. And we've been giving you different areas of your life where we can be a unified team. And we talked about being unified in your marriage and also being unified with your children. And then we were talking about the church, the body of Christ, how we can stay unified. Well, that brings us to the fourth point. We need to be unified with God. Right. I remember years ago how I'd be out drinking, doing drugs, I remember one time I got my friends all Bibles for Christmas. I mean, we just all we did was party, get high, and just hang out. But it must have been something God put in me when I got saved when I was seven years old. But I just grew up in a crazy world, drinking, drugs, fighting. And, then, and I mean, I'd be out like snorting cocaine, getting drunk, telling people about Jesus. And I'll never forget one night I was at a party, and this guy was over just blaspheming God, talking about God, and... I was like, I'm going to knock this dude out. And all of a sudden, I just started blazing this dude. Boom, boom, just beating him up. I was trying to take up for God, but I wasn't unified with God myself until I was almost, I was 30 years old when I really met Jesus. Like I said, I got saved, and I truly believe I got saved when I was about seven years old. But I truly met God about when I was 30 years old, and it transformed my life. I got united with God, and he started leading me into books and into the Bible and revealing himself to me. John 4, 24, God is the Spirit. First John 4, God is love. I met the Spirit of love, and he united me with him. And now I be, and the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 6, 17, you become one in spirit with the Lord Jesus. I became one in spirit. And then I started getting into that word, renewing my mind to what his word says, becoming who he created me to be in the first place. And now I can unite others to God, which I tried to do years ago in a drunken, demonic state of mind. But now it's working for me because I know him myself. That's so good, Anthony. And, you know, we have a key point that kind of goes with what you're saying here. And it's basically after we receive Jesus, we become one in spirit. But in order for our soul, our mind, will, and emotions to be unified with God, we must get in agreement with His Word. Mm -hmm. That's the key. That's the ticket that Anthony was talking about. You know, if we want to be unified with God, we got to be unified with His Word. And, you know, I knew a few scriptures growing up here and there. I was in the Bible drill. I could, you know, find it really fast, and I could quote it to you really fast. But I just didn't understand how to really apply that scripture. I didn't have a real good revelation of what these scriptures meant. Um, you know, Philippians 4.13, I've known practically all my life. I can do all things through Christ, which gives me strength. And, you know, but I don't know that I ever even applied that scripture or believed that scripture or spoke that scripture until I was, you know, in my upper 20s as well. And that's when I really got this revelation of how God's word can really transform your life. If you get into it and you read it and you meditate on it and you speak it over and over and over until you believe it with all your heart, your life can really change. That's true. And, and, and God is his word. John 1.1. 1, 1. God in that word is one. Right. Hebrews four twelve, it's alive, and so you get into it, and it comes alive. I remember after I really met God, like I said, when I was about thirty, and then the Bible just came alive to me. And I'm, I'll never forget. I read this book called Wild at Heart. That book came alive to me, right? Because God was using this book to speak to me, to like everything that you went through and why you went through it. I mean, it was just, it was such a revelation why I was like I was I mean because I was crazy and uh but it just it opened my eyes yeah 
And then God started leading me down different, different books and to the Bible and to the church. And I mean, because you get in line with him, become one with him, then he's already got that path laid out for you to walk in. Mm -hmm. And he starts leading you to it. And so we started walking on that path and God started putting my life together like a puzzle. He started putting it together. And I've, I've done the show before on this, like it's like the Karate Kid. You know, he's like Mr. Miyagi, guys like Mr. Miyagi from the Karate Kid. Everything you went through and all these different places that you were at, God puts them all together to make you that masterpiece that he's created. He's created you in his image and in his likeness, Genesis 126 says. In Ephesians 2.10, you are his masterpiece, created for good works, which he preordained that you should walk in them. you got a preordained path, masterpiece, that you should walk in. Become one with God. Get in unity. Get into that word. Allow him to mold you, to make you, to shape you into the beautiful masterpiece that he has created you to be. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, we're going to give you an opportunity to pray a prayer right now. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12 that salvation is from no other name under heaven in which man can be saved. That is the name of Jesus. Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 says, If you'll confess that Jesus is your Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved. It isn't about what you have or haven't done. It's all about what he has done for you. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, We're saved by grace through faith, that not of ourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. See, salvation is a free gift. Religion teaches you got to do all this good stuff and you take it to God and you say, God... Will you accept this? Christianity, Jesus did it all. And he takes it to man. He says, man, will you receive this? Right. That's what grace is all about. Unmerited favor, undeserved access to God the Father through the Son, Jesus. I'm going to say this prayer. I encourage you to, to mean it from your heart, to say it with your mouth. Say, Father God. Father God. I come to you in Jesus' name. Come to you in Jesus' name. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I believe God raised you from the dead. I believe God raised you from the dead. I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. I ask for all your gifts. I ask for all your gifts. I believe I receive it. I believe I receive it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3, that no man or woman can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Confess out loud, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. You just got born again. I encourage you to get into a full Bible teaching church. And if you're in the Nashville, Mount Juliet area, come to Joy Church in Mount Juliet. And if you've been blessed by this program and you feel led to give financially, go to ringoffaithtv.com, click on the Donate tab. You'll find all the information you need to help us bring the Word of God to the world. Renew your mind to God's Word by seeing, saying, and believing His promises. And, and that's how you, you become, become a knockout, knockout artist in life. life. Oh,